Father God, this morning we come with the heart of gratitude and we declare it, we proclaim it, that we are standing on your promises and we are surrounded by your goodness. And Lord, you have overwhelmed us with your love and your glory, your power, your graciousness. Lord, we just want to thank you. We just want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts for all you have done for us, for the things you have done, Lord, to this date. We say thank you for the things you are set to do today. Father, for the mind-blowing testimonies of miracles of today, we say thank you for what you are set to do tomorrow. We are grateful, Lord, for what you are set to do this week and in the weeks to come. We just want to thank you. We bless your name. We are indeed very grateful, oh God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Father, we say thank you. Thank you, the great God, the marvelous God, the glorious God, the awesome God. Thank you, the one who was and is and is to come. Thank you, the marvelous God. Thank you, the mighty one of Israel. Thank you, Father God. We don't know what to say, but thank you. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, Lord. You've done it again. Your glory, Lord, your glory has brought us this far. Thank you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Good morning, good morning, brethren. Um, I just feel very glad and excited that we are born again this morning, that we are children of God. You know, I'm sure you've asked yourself this question before. I have a lot. Sometimes you sit down and say, where would I be if it wasn't for God? If God didn't say, where would I be? And you know, I know the answer for myself. I don't know for you, but I know I wouldn't be alive right now if it hadn't been for God's mercy. I know that I would just, in fact, the memory would have faded by now. People would have forgotten to hold one minute silence by now. You know, we just want to say thank you to our Redeemer, our Savior, our glory, the lifter of our heads. We just want to say thank you for the gift of salvation. That Lord, we don't take it for granted that you went to the cross on our behalf. That you were beaten up to a pulp so that we could have strength, we could have power, we could be able to take authority over the powers of darkness. Lord, thank you for paying the price. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for dying a shameful death that we could live a life of honor and grace. Thank you, Jesus, for the nails that, Lord, you allowed them to put through your hands so that we could be blessed today, so that the works of our hands would be blessed. Lord, when they nailed your hands to the cross, they allowed blessings to flow through our hands. We say thank you. Lord Jesus, when they beat you up beyond recognition, they beat up your face like that. They did it so that we could be beautified. Lord, we just want to thank you. Lord Jesus, when they forced the crown of thorns into your scalp with thorns that were so long that you were bleeding from the head, they did it so that we could have the mind of Christ. You bled that our mindsets would change and we would have the mindset of victors, the mindset of overcomers. You did all this for us, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, when they beat up your back and stripped all the flesh from your back, it was so that we could be healed. Thank you, Lord, because they went be beyond the 39 stripes for you. They didn't even count how many times they beat you up. They tore your flesh so that every disease process and every disease name, every name of infirmities, cancer, diabetes, kidney failure, heart failure, back pain, musculoskeletal pain, whatever pain, all of them were judged on your back on the cross of Calvary. This morning we stand here as those who are recipients of your grace, of your healing, of your deliverance because of what you went through at any point in time you could have stopped the proceedings of the crucifixion but you didn't Lord because you thought about me you thought about my brothers and sisters in Christ this morning you thought about our families you thought about our bloodlines you thought about what Adam and Eve had lost and you wanted to restore us and we say thank you this morning we are grateful Lord look at what you've done for us see what the Lord has done what we waited for it has come to pass because of the cross. Lord Jesus, at any point, you could have stopped. You could have said, I no longer want to be the propitiation for their sins. I no longer want to be the sacrifice for their lives. But you went through it so that today we can stand with boldness and say, Jesus is my righteousness. He is the propitiation for my sins. He died that I might be the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Lord, thank you. You died so that we could testify with boldness that we are 
are sons and daughters of the most high God and that we are delivered from the hands of the enemy. Thank you for dying our death. Thank you for dying our death. Thank you for dying our death so that we could have Zoe, the power of an endless life. Lord, we thank you. We worship you. We honor you. We exalt your name. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy. You are worthy, Jehovah. We worship you. We exalt your name. Lama sukereba kurra babasia. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. When we go to the book of Luke 23 and we, we read about the crucifixion is one of the long, long chapters in the Bible. And the Bible says about the Lord Jesus that the, in verse um, 33, Luke 23, when they came to the place called the skull, the place of the skull. Can you imagine? This is the place where there is death. They came to that place of the skull, the place where death had been reigning. But Jesus came and death stopped reigning. He took back the keys of death and hell and he silenced them. It says there they crucified him. And one criminal on the right hand and one criminal on the left. He was counted amongst the criminals so that you and I can be counted amongst the saints. Thank you, Jesus. And Jesus was saying in verse 34, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots, dividing his clothes among themselves. Father, forgive them. They have no clue. They don't know what they're doing. Lord, even those who are putting nails in my hands, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Lord, this morning, thank you for forgiving us, for we don't know what we're doing. Lord, thank you. Every sin, every transgression, every pattern of iniquity, thank you for forgiving us. Because we don't know what we're doing. Let the blood of Jesus uh, cleanse us of every form of unrighteousness. In the name of Jesus. And by the same vain child of God. If Jesus could look at the people beating him up and nailing him. And say they don't know what they're doing. Who on earth knows what they're doing? That sister who is a pain in the side. That brother who speaks out of turn. That person who offended you. Lord this morning we forgive them. They do not know what they're doing. What do they know? If the people who nailed Jesus didn't know what they're doing. What does my neighbor know? What does my brother and sister in Christ know? Any offense Lord this morning we let it go. In the name of Jesus. Uh, we forgive all offenses. Uh, we let it go. We do not count anything against anybody. In the name of Jesus. This is a brand new day. We start on a blank slate. In the name of Jesus. Uh, we forgive Lord. Uh, we let go uh, of all resentment. Uh, Lord whatever they did. Uh, they don't know what they're doing. If they knew better. They wouldn't do it. In the name of Jesus. Bible says in verse 35, the people stood by, the people he was dying for, they were watching and even the rulers, they ridiculed and sneered at Jesus and said he saved others from death. Let him save himself. If he's the Christ, let, if he's God's chosen one, let him bring himself down from there. It says the soldiers mocked him. They came to him and they offered him cruelly sour wine and sarcastically were saying, if you are really the king of the Jews, save yourself child of God. Do you have mockers? You are in good company because the king of kings had mockers. If you have mockers, you are in good company. Whoever laughed at you, mocked you, jeered at you, sneered at you, they were just praying for you. Begin to thank God uh, and say, Lord Jesus, uh, I thank you for the fellowship of your sufferings. Uh, I thank you for the fellowship of your sufferings. Uh, I thank you, Lord. Uh, oh, Rabbi Siam, you paid the price uh, for my lifting. Uh, you paid the price. Uh, and so this morning I say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be glorified in the name of Jesus. And then one of the thieves, one of the thieves began to, re to rebuke the other criminal, began to rebuke the other criminal for not fearing God. And then he said to Jesus, simple sentence in Luke 23, 42, he said, Jesus, please remember me when you come into your kingdom. And you know, his kingdom has already come. Jesus said to him, I assure you and most solemnly say to you today, you will be with me in paradise. All he said was, Lord, remember me in your kingdom. Lord Jesus, remember us in your kingdom. Thank you that we are part of your kingdom this morning. The kingdom of God, which is righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Thank you this morning that we are recipients of righteousness. We are recipients of joy, joy unspeakable, rivers of joy, streams of joy. Yes, Lord. Rabo Sekelebosia. 
salvation, righteousness, peace, shalom, shalom. Thank you, Lord. There is no anxiety in our lives because we are in the kingdom. We are under the jurisdiction of the kingdom. We will not be anxious. We will not be anxious. We will not be worried because we are in the kingdom. And in the kingdom, the Lord said, take no thought about what tomorrow will bring. Take no thought. Do not worry. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer, thanksgiving, and supplication, make your request known unto God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Lord, we thank you this morning. We have shalom. Shalom, shalom. In the name of Jesus. Anything that is turbulent at the moment, we speak peace. We speak peace over every heart, over every mind. The peace of God that transcends all understanding. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be exalted. You are worthy to be magnified. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We, we, we salute your greatness, oh God. We celebrate, we honor you, and we reverence you. In the name of Jesus. In the book of first, sorry, second Samuel, second Samuel chapter 23, second Samuel chapter 23. Now, when David was coming to the end of his life, now by the grace of God, we've already declared nobody here is coming to the end of their life because nobody here is 90 years old. Nobody is, is, is at that age of going. So now G David was just reflecting on the, on, on the mercy and the grace and the faithfulness of God. And he said in, in 2 Samuel 23, I'll read it in the King James because it's very poetic. Um, verse 1. It says, now these be the last words of David. David, the son of Jesse said, and the man who was raised up on high, the anointed of the God of Jacob and the sweet psalmist of Israel. He said, he is the man who was raised on high, the anointed of the God of Jacob. David once upon a time was just a poor broke shepherd boy a non-entity according to humanity but God raised him on high lifted him up gave him the anointing to kill Goliath gave him the anointing to fight battles and win he became an inspiration to everybody around him because of the anointing the anointing came upon him and as soon as he was anointed he was raised on high the anointing doesn't cause a person to remain low the anointing raises a person on high when the anointing comes on a man or a woman, the anointing, just like, you know, cream rises to the top of milk. When you have milk that has not yet been taken through all the processes that um, people take milk through, you know, when you have milk, when they scream in the milk, the cream will rise to the surface. It will rise just like that. When we have the anointing of the Holy Spirit, we will rise. He says, a man that was raised by God. I want you to begin to receive once again and say, Holy Spirit, I thank you for being with me. And this morning, once again, I receive an unction from you because the Bible says in first John, first John chapter two twenty. but you have an unction from the Holy one and you know all things you have an unction, you have an anointing and the word unction there is the Greek word charisma is the Greek word uh, that means you have been smeared. Uh, you have been anointed with the ointment of the Holy Spirit. You have the sweet oil and the perfume of the Holy Spirit. Uh, when you walk into a room, uh, that perfume of the Holy Spirit, uh, it diffuses into the room. Uh, it fills every place. Uh, you carry a presence. Uh, you don't go alone. Uh, you have an unction. Uh, you have been smeared. Uh, yes, uh, that Greek word, chrisma. You have been smeared uh, with an oil. Uh, the oil of the Holy spirit uh, is upon us this morning begin to thank God uh, and say Lord I thank you that I have an unction I have the charisma of the Holy Spirit uh, the sweet oil uh, the perfume uh, the fragrance of your glory is upon me this morning uh, ah Lord we thank you Jehovah we thank you for the unction from the Holy One this morning uh, thank you Lord uh, that we have an unction the Bible says you have an unction from the Holy One and you know all things uh, you have knowings uh, that you Human beings cannot understand uh, because the unction of the Holy Spirit uh, gives you direction, uh, gives you revelation, uh, empowers you to discern uh, between evil and good. Uh, Lord, we thank you this morning. Uh, thank you for the oil, uh, for the oil uh, that is upon our lives this morning. Uh, and Lord, uh, by this same oil, uh, you are raising us up. Uh, let's begin to pray just like David. Uh, speak to yourself. 
and say, I am the one who has been raised up on high. I am the anointed one of the God of Jacob, the God who changes names. Jacob was given a name by human beings. That name was not consistent with who he was. When he wrestled with God, God said, you are not Jacob. You are Israel, a prince with God and men, for you have prevailed. You have prevailed. You are a prince. Never mind the names, the names that they call you that are not consistent with who you are. The God of Jacob is the God who changes names for the better. The God who encounters you and changes your name and changes your story. Lord, we thank you that we've been raised on high by the God of Jacob who changes names. Yes, Lord. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your power. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Oh, we worship you. Thank you, Lord. He said in 2 Samuel chapter 23, verse 2, he said, the spirit of the Lord spoke by me and his word was in my tongue. Child of God, let the same thing happen for you this morning. Let the spirit of God speak through you this morning continually, consistently, and let the word of God be on your tongue. Every time you open your mouth, uh, may the spirit speak uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, the spirit of God speak through me. Uh, David, uh, David was speaking like a man who dwelt in the days of Pentecost. Remember, he lived in the Old Testament, yet he could understand uh, that the spirit of God was in him, upon him, uh, he could speak by the spirit. Yes. He said the word of God was upon my tongue. Because the entrance of your word. It brings light. It gives understanding to the simple. Yes. Psalm 119 verse 113. That is the entrance of his word. And your word is a lamp unto my feet. And a light unto my path. Let your word be on my tongue. In the name of Jesus. When I speak. Let it be the word coming out. In the name of Jesus. Shaka barebosi and the Makura because the Bible said that as many as are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. The proof of sonship is that we are being led. Lord, may I speak by the Spirit and may your word be in my mouth in the name of Jesus. Your word, your word, your word, that sharp two edged sword, may it continually be in our mouths this week in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Romans 8, 14. I want to read it for us in the Amplified. We know the scripture. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. But in the Amplified, it says, For all who are allowing themselves to be led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. All who are allowing themselves because the Spirit is here. The Spirit is leading. But will you allow yourself to be led? Will you allow yourself? Will you go a different direction? Or will you submit to the Spirit? Child of God, as many, all who are allowing themselves to be led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Let's surrender to Him this morning. Lead me, Holy Spirit. I have my agenda, but I submit my agenda to You. I submit my will to the will of God. I submit my ideas uh, to the ideas of heaven. I submit my thoughts to the thoughts of God. Uh, for Your thoughts uh, are higher than my thoughts. Uh, your ways are higher than my ways. As far as the heavens are above the earth, so are your thoughts higher than my thoughts. So are your ways higher than my ways. I submit to the higher dimension of the almighty God. I submit to your thoughts, O God. I submit to you. I submit to you. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Have your way. You know better, Lord. You know better. You know better. We submit. We submit. Lord, you know more than we do. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Oh, we worship you. Let your glory cloud continue to be over us, around us, and everywhere, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Psalm 114. Psalm 114. As we are submitted to the Lord, as the Lord is in the midst of us, when the Lord leads us, child of God, it means we enjoy the impact of his power in our surroundings. Bible says in Psalm 114, I want to read from verse 1 in the Amplified Version. 
It says when Israel came out of Egypt, the house of Jacob, when they came from a people of a strange language, Judah became the sanctuary of God and Israel became his dominion. In other words, they became the place where the kingdom of God was made manifest and where his kingdom is made manifest, he, he, he exercises dominion. Where his kingdom is manifested, he exercises dominion. And when Father God exercises dominion, this is what happened. Verse 3, the Red Sea looked and fled. Ah, that excited me. That water had eyes. The Red Sea had eyes. It looked and it says, oh no, oh no, no, no. The God of the universe, El Elyon has come, begin to run away. And it made a way for the children of God to walk through. Creation looked and fled. They ran for their lives. Fled is not that they walked away slowly. They ran. The waters ran. They were divided instantly and made a way for the children of God to walk through because the dominion had arrived. They recognized who he is. He says that Jordan turned back. Jordan, river Jordan looked and said, we cannot stay here. And he ran back and the children of God could walk free. He says the mountains, they leaped like rams. The hills, they leaped like lambs. He says, what ails you, O sea, that you flee? O Jordan, that you turn back. O mountains, that you leap like, like rams. The hills, you leap like lambs. He says, tremble, O earth. Tremble at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob, who turned the rock into a pool of water and the flint into a fountain of water. This is the God we are serving, child of God, as he has arrived in his dominion right now. That situation in your life has fled. Begin to thank him and say, Father, I thank you because Lord, your dominion is here. Whatever, name that problem. The problem looks at God and it flees. It looks at God, it flees. The diagnosis looks at God and it flees. Whatever is the situation because God is in control. He is El Elyon. He is the possessor of the heavens and the earth. He is Elohim. He created Satan. He created Lucifer. God is God. In the name of Jesus, according to Psalm 114, when your dominion was made manifest, Father, the Red Sea looked and fled. The Jordan turned back. They couldn't stand to be in your presence. They knew who you are. Lord, this morning, every demon, every agent of darkness, the principalities, the powers, the rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places, they know who they are dealing with. As Yahweh is here, they flee. They turn back. They flee flee the God who causes the mountains to skip her. Who art thou, O great mountain? Before I, the seed of Zerubbabel, you have become a plain. You have become a plain. You have been made level ground in the mighty name of Jesus. Every creation, every creation, they flee at the presence of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Nothing can resist God. Nothing can resist God. In the name of Jesus, the same way the Red Sea parted this morning, every agenda of wickedness, you must part for the children of God to go through. Every agenda of wickedness, you are parted like the Jordan turned back and ran away. You are running away. Flee at the presence of the Almighty God. Flee at the presence of the King of Glory. Flee. The Bible says, tremble, O earth. Psalm 114 verse 7. Tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord. Begin to speak to the earth. Earth, O earth, and every inhabitant of the earth, and everything operating in the earth realm, I command you, tremble at the presence of the Lord. Tremble at the presence of the Lord. At the presence of the God of Jacob, the covenant-keeping God. Tremble in his presence. Tremble. Tremble in his presence presence. The king of glory is here. He rules. He reigns. Tremble in his presence. No power is permitted to rise up against the children of God. Tremble at the presence of God. In the mighty name of Jesus. This is the God who makes impossibilities possible. This is the God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Tremble. Tremble in the name of Jesus. Shalababa Babasia. Shekelebosia.
The Bible says in verse 8, God turned the rock into a pool of water. When you look at the Bible, it tells us one day they were thirsty. They needed water. And God said, Moses, speak to the rock. Speak to the rock. We have the rock of ages in our midst. He is here. He can bring water out of a rock. What is that situation? Because he makes impossibilities possible. He makes water come out of the rock. If we look at Numbers 20 verse 7, we see this miracle where they spoke to the rock and the rock brought water. That is a miracle, an amazing miracle because rocks are dry. Whoever would think water would come out of a rock? But this is our God. He is able and he says he, he, he commanded the flint to turn into a fountain. That is a miracle work in God. What is the flint in your life right now? That situation that looks impossible. God can turn it around. Begin to prophesy to it by the name of the God of Jacob who brings water out of the rock. I speak to you. You stubborn situation. You are coming to life. In the name of Jesus, begin to speak. Body, you are healed. Begin to speak. Business, you are blessed. Water is coming out of you. Business, you are bringing forth a marvelous yield, abundance, increase oh Rabasia, professional job, you are blessed, you are bringing blessings into my life and into my family education, I speak blessing over you, there is a good result coming out for our children and everyone who is studying we receive all their degrees their doctorates, their PhDs their MBB, whatever else Lord we receive it in the name of Jesus, the miracle worker that bank account, we speak to you. Abundance is flowing through you. You will no longer live from paycheck to paycheck. Let the abundance flow. God gives you the wisdom for investment. God gives you the wisdom in the name of Jesus. Ligadosia, overwhelming supply that swallows up the debt and the credit cards in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Water is flowing out of the rock in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father. We worship you. Oh, Riagado Socoria Baba Baba Baba. We worship you. We worship you. Le Kasika Labashaya. In the mighty name of Jesus. And when we go to, 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 to Job 26 14, Job 26 14, you see, for us human beings, when we see all what the Lord is doing, sometimes it's mind blowing. There is a testimony you receive that you think you are the first person on planet earth to receive that testimony, but no, you are not. And then there is a testimony you will receive. You will think, oh, <laughs> at this time, God really showed up. This time, God really showed up. But you know what? That is not even the full extent of what God can do. Yesterday, um, Brother Ugo was teaching us about optimizing the word of God. But you know, sometimes even when we think I've optimized this word, oh, this is amazing. This story is amazing. Even then. We've not even seen the fullness of his glory. Let's go to Job 26. I know this morning, child of God, that God is doing miracles for us, for the church of God, for everybody around us as we trust in him. But you know, we've not exhausted him. That's why tomorrow we will come again and we will pray again because every day is a new day. Don't postpone your miracle and say, you know what? I've been receiving. Yesterday I received. Today again, look, child of God, you can receive until kingdom come. You will not exhaust God. Job 26, Job 26, verse 13 and 14. I won't read the full, um, you know, in fact, let me read from verse 12 so that Leviathan can be disgraced. He said in verse 12 to 14, Job 26, I'm reading Amplified. God stirred up the sea by his power and by his understanding, he smashed proud Rahab. That's another word for Leviathan and the water spirits and all the mummy water demons that think they can be pursuing God's children up and down. God stirred up the sea by his power and by his understanding, he smashed them. He smashed Rahab. He smashed Leviathan. He smashed the water spirits, the water demons, mummy water and all this. They are destroyed by his power in the name of Jesus. Verse 13, he said, by his breath, the heavens are cleared. 
Is there anything opposing you in the heavenly realms, in the, in the dimensions of the first heaven, the second heaven? Daniel said he prayed a prayer and some, some demonic angels had the guts, had the guts to oppose the angels of God. But you know what this morning? He says by his breath, God clears the heavens. He clears the heavens. Whatever is standing in the heavenly realms and saying you can't move. Uh, they are liars this morning. Uh, the breath of God clears them in the name of Jesus. Let the hindering spirits be cleared. Uh, let the hindrances be cleared this morning by the breath of God in the name of Jesus. His hand has pierced the swiftly fleeing serpent. Leviathan is pierced. What is Leviathan? It's a principality child of God. You and I cannot even bind Leviathan. It's only God who binds Leviathan. But God said he has pierced that swiftly fleeing serpent. It is that spirit of backlash that you come here and then it comes, it backlashes, it destroys the testimony. This morning, he can't do that again because the power of God is against him. The Bible says uh, God has pierced the swiftly fleeing serpent. No more backlash. Clash. No more confusion of tongues. Uh, people lying against you behind your back. Uh, evil testimonies. Uh, that is the work of Leviathan. God says he pierces that serpent in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Verse 14, where I want to go. It says, all this, God clearing the heavens, destroying the water spirits, God dis destroying Leviathan. He says, yet these are just the fringes of his ways. They are mere samples of his power. They are mere samples of his power. They are the faintest whisper of his voice. He has not even started shouting. He's just a whisper. His whisper does all this. Who can contemplate the thunder of his full mighty power? Guess what? Even that evil altar in your, in your father's house, in your mother's house, the evil altars they raised in your bloodlines. It's just the whisper of God that has destroyed them. He has not even started shouting. He says, who can contemplate the thunder and the full might of his power? If God turned his power on full blast, what would be left? Even the bomb of Hiroshima and Nagasaki cannot compare. Begin to thank God this morning and say, Lord, I thank you that the fringes of your power have given me a breakthrough. The faintest whisper of your voice has given me a breakthrough, has silenced the demonic contentions, silenced the satanic powers. These are about the fringes of the power of God. God is almighty, all powerful. There is nothing he cannot do. And this morning, Lord, I thank you. In your whisper is deliverance. In your whisper is transformation. In your whisper, the sick rise from that sick bed. In your whisper is a new beginning, is a new dawn, is a new day. We are grateful this morning. As we step out of our homes, uh, we are not alone. Uh, we are going in the power of God uh, who caused the Red Sea to flee before his presence. You caused the sea to run away. Lord, I thank you. When I step outside of my home, every satanic power must run uh, because we are not alone. Uh, when we get to our workplaces, uh, they must run. Uh, the demonic agendas must run uh, and the will of God must be established today in the name of Jesus. Uh, in every dimension, in every timeline, in every realm, uh, we declare the will of God comes to pass in the name of Jesus. Uh, the glory of his presence surrounds us. Uh, and Lord, uh, we thank you that we are recipients of uncommon breakthroughs, uncommon miracles, uh, uncommon workings of the spirit. Uh, we bless your name, Jesus. Your death will never be in vain in our lives. Uh, you died for us to have all this. We inherit the kingdom in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen and amen.